by running from it. I started doing stand up comedy in 2006. Um, I was 36 years old and I was considered a dinosaur because all of my peers were a decade or more younger than me. And anyone who was my age had been in the game for a long time. Um, so I had a lot of catching up to do. And I was what they called an open micer, which means you're not good enough to get paid to do shows. So you go to like amateur nights and you practice. And that's how you get good enough. And I fell in love with stand-up comedy. I went to the open mics and I did the jokes. I wrote jokes and I um, hung out with the other comics and I learned what it was all about. And um, we had to hang out for after the show and we'd like talk shop after the crowds had long gone. And it was really fun. And I became part of a really cool community that like not a lot of people get to experience. My name is Jill Kimmel, K-I-M-M-E-L. Yes, yep, like Jimmy Kimmel. Exactly like that, in fact. Yeah, he's my older brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, same parents. Yes, my actual brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we're very proud of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know, he's really funny. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, okay, uh-huh. Yeah, no, it, I mean, it's a little weird. Yeah, but it's, it's fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell him. See, these are the conversations that I tried to avoid. It's not that hard to dodge conversations about the famous sibling um, because I was married, and so I had a different last name. So when I was introduced on stage to audiences, they had no idea that the original occupant of my mother's womb was a mega celebrity. Which was nice to be able to develop as a comedian without, you know, being in his shadow that way. Because um, nobody expected anything from me. And I like that. I like that. Everything about me was different. Uh, my humor is different than his. I would be writing jokes about making lunches and losing weight and driving the kids to school. And he was off, like, filming sketches with George Clooney and Oprah, you know. Uh, our medium was different. I would be telling jokes in dark bars and comedy clubs to a handful of drunks, and he'd be telling jokes on national television to millions of drunks, you know. <laughs> Our paychecks were definitely different. Yes, if I got our parents a $50 gift card to Outback, that was the same thing as him buying them a new beach house. Like, that's just kind of how it was. Most awkward Christmas ever, by the way. Very, very awkward. The month that I was selected to be on the cover of a local Arizona magazine, which I was very proud of, by the way, was also the month that he was on Success Magazine. I host, for the last eight years, a weekly open mic at a Mexican restaurant, and he hosts the Oscars. I had to distance myself as Jimmy Kimmel's sister to earn respect in the comedy world. Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive, and a lot of you are probably thinking the same thing that all my friends say, oh my God, are you crazy? Why wouldn't you tell everybody? I would totally tell everybody. You should have him let you be on his show. Like, it doesn't work like that in the comedy world. I mean, to be honest, it doesn't work like that in any world. Can you imagine a famous brain surgeon just letting his kid sister scrub in after a few months of med school? Hey there, Becky. Want to take a selfie with a beating human heart? Like, it'd make a great Christmas card. Like, oh my God, what filter should we use for this? I don't know. Definitely not black and white. To advance in comedy, there are many paths. But to advance in comedy and to deserve it, you've got to put in the work. Nobody is consistently hilarious unless they're writing jokes and rewriting jokes and getting the stage time. You have to make it count. No matter how many hands are extended to you, to help you up, the only thing that matters is the personal effort. And so there I was, flesh and blood of one of the most insanely talented, successful, famous people in the world, anonymously banging out jokes at makeshift stages for like a free soda and half a basket of cold french fries. Like, that's sometimes what I would get if I was lucky. And everybody wondered, why? They wanted to know why.
And it is, why is a great question? Why is a very fair question? It is a question I've actually asked myself along the way about a lot of things. Uh, why would I subject myself to this kind of a career? So many ups and downs. Uh, the scrutiny that comes along with it. Why would I want to tell a bunch of strangers my most personal secrets? Like, why? Why wouldn't I just ask Jimmy for help? That last question was had an answer that came through very loud and clear every time it passed my mind. And the answer was, because he can't help you. He can't help you. He can't help you. And that kind of sucked. <laughs> but it was also kind of awesome. Because that meant that anything that I got, any show that I booked, any joke that I told that really made the crowd laugh, that belonged to me. That was mine. But on the other side of that coin, any contest that I lost, any part that I didn't get cast in, any callback I didn't get, any joke that I told that bombed or that people booed or walked out because of, well, those were also mine. <laughs> but that was okay. That was okay because I had to do it that way. And it was just me, just me and my ego kind of banging it out, you know, like figuring out where we're going to go. Is this what we want to do as a career? Is this what we want to subject ourselves to? You know, what are our strengths? What are our weaknesses? My weakness, my main weakness is writing. Writing is very difficult. It's very hard for me to force myself to sit down and write unless I have a looming deadline. Like, looming. Very hard for me. I work best under pressure, which is a nice way of saying I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> I had four months to prepare for this, and I finished writing it last week. To be fair, I also started writing it last week. So the turnaround time is excellent. It's excellent. Um, but I mean, would it kill you people to get a teleprompter? Not for nothing, I'm just saying. But my main strength I've always felt is kind of my stage presence. Um, I, oh look how cute I am. Um, I've always kind of had the capacity to make people at least willing to listen to what I have to say. They may not like it, they may not think it's funny, they may walk away going, she's an idiot, but I've had the capacity to kind of at least engage someone enough where they're willing to listen to what I have to say. And um, that's great if you want to be a comedian. I mean, that's awesome. Um, and I had to do it by myself. I had to develop my comedy by, with, and for myself. And I knew that it had to be that way. And so did Jimmy. And then it happened. After 19 years of a not so fairy tale marriage, I was pulling the plug. I was getting divorced, and um, everybody had the same question for me. They, not really so much are the kids okay? You're gonna have to sell the house. What do your parents think? They wanted to know if I'd be changing my last name back. You didn't change your last name back? Are you gonna do it? They wanted to know if I was gonna change my last Now, most people, when faced with a divorce, you go, listen, do I have kids? Do I want to have the same last name as the kids? Um, do I mind being reminded of a failed relationship every time I see my own last name? That's kind of what, but me, I had an extra layer of questions. It was an emotional layer that did not have anything to do with my former spouse or with my kids, my awesome kids who I'm very lucky to have. Um, didn't have anything to do with them. For me, it was the worry that people would think I was gonna to try to capitalize on the last name Kimmel, I changed my last name back to it. And uh, that kind of sucked, you know? It kind of sucked. The um, inner conversation I had was a real struggle, you know? Thinking about, like, would people say, oh my God, I totally knew she was going to do that. I knew she changed her last name back. Of course. She probably got divorced just to change her last name to Kimmel. She's totally going to bank on this. <sighs> yes, people did say that. They they did say it. They are still saying it. They're still saying it. But they were wrong. Because the struggle I was having with this inner conversation really was, would even my own brother, Jimmy himself, think that I was trying to make a desperate grab at his coattails by changing my last name back? Yeah, that hurts, you know? And I thought, you know what? No, not him. Not the person he is so successful yet always so encouraging and wanting everyone else to succeed, he's not the one I need to worry about. He would never think that. And so 
I realized, you know what? It doesn't matter what all these other people think out there. It doesn't matter what those people think about me trying to cling to my roots. Because they're my roots. Look how good looking that family is. They're my roots. I had the same awesome parents, the same amazing cousins and aunts and uncles, grandparents, all the same family. I can totally go back to being a Kimmel because I've always been a Kimmel. As a comedian, I did the work. I wrote the jokes. I stayed up late nights. I drove 12 hours to a gig that paid me 75 bucks and then got a ticket on the way that cost me 80. You know, I've done it. I did all of that. I've toured the world five times performing for the United States military. I did that. That was me. Got cast on Comedy Central with Kevin Hart on his show, Heart of the City. That was me. Look, that's me and Kevin. That's me and Kevin. You like that? We're cute, right? Yeah, I know. It was fun. It was awesome. That was me. That was all me. That was my doing. And so when thinking about, God, am I going to do this? Am I going to take my last name back? The last name that my father so proudly gave to us, he gave to all of us. I mean, not all of us. Not all of us. He gave it to, like, me and my brothers, all of us, he gave it to. But, like, God, he's so proud. You know what? I am so confident and very happy to take that last name back. I really am. You know, I had to distance myself from asking Jimmy for help in order to develop who I was as a comedian. And only when I was faced with the question of whether I would change my name back, take my roots back, was when I realized, wow, running away from my roots made it so much sweeter when I was finally able to embrace them again. I'm Jill Kimmel, K-I-M-M-E-L. Yeah, just like Jimmy. Thanks for listening.